Hello guys and welcome. This is the first video of days of a thousand subs. Uh, I'll be pumping out uh, a few videos, you know, back to back because uh, we reached 1000 subscribers and it's thanks to all of you guys uh, loving my videos and sticking with me. And thank you so much for that. So I'll be giving you an extra dose of tips and tricks uh, on Alibre. And I'm even wearing my special uniform today. So what are we going to be doing today? Well, today we will be doing a Too Tall Toby part. It is the part that has now officially taken uh, the title of Toby's Hardest Part. Okay, this is it. It's uncontested. It's the hardest part Toby has ever put out in any of the, his competitions. Uh, you know, poor, poor Mr. Alex and Dom had to, had to design it and, uh, really, really difficult one. Uh, however, during the competition, I said in the chat that I would like to have that part. And I mean it because I thought, I thought of a way of doing it immediately on the spot. I probably would have gotten it wrong because there are some tricks which I usually miss. <laughs> and this is it. It's the dreaded soap holder. Okay, so what is this thing? It's a, a wire, four millimeter wire, as we see in the Toby notes. Really, really important Toby notes. We never forget about our Toby notes. It's a four millimeter wire going around and then six millimeter wire, sorry, six four millimeter wires welded on the bottom of it, um, forming a soap holder as the title would suggest. Now, it's a really, really tricky part. I commented in the chat uh, section during the competition that I would really like to have that part because as soon as I saw it, I immediately thought of uh, a way to do it. We're going to be designing today using that very specific method that came to mind on the spot during the competition. Uh, that doesn't mean that I would have won the competition that day because <clears throat> I probably would have messed up the dimensions because there are quite a few tricks here and uh, let's uh, dive in explaining it i will explain it first and then go ahead and, de and design it so we have this shape right it looks like it's half a circle uh, uh watching toby's videos and participating in his competitions i know one thing if it looks like a half a circle it certainly isn't uh so we have a line here and an arc right and they're connected by these filleted corners um and what do we have here? We have 175 millimeters outer diameter, sorry, outer length, really, really important, the outer bit, right? And then we have 80 millimeters height. Again, it is outer dimensions. And since we have a four millimeter wire, that means that, for example, in this 18 millimeter um, height, we have minus two millimeters for the center line of that wire, minus two millimeters here at the top, and minus two millimeters here at the bottom. So the center line running through that wire has a height of 76. Uh, similarly, this is not 175, but if you're designing the center line, that is a 171. And here's the real, really, really, tricky part that would have you know certainly gotten me um in the competition you see here that this fillet says r10 on the outside right and it says r6 on the inside right over here that's what we're talking about uh, that means that the center line of that sweep has an r8 millimeters there right uh, really, really important. Uh, another thing is we have here that from center to center of these wires, now we're talking about center lines here, right? Here, Toby is telling us typically 12 millimeters center to center. So we are talking about center lines here. Uh, that's 12 millimeters, uh, which of course creates a eight millimeter gap. Again, two millimeters from one wire, two millimeters from the other, eight millimeter gap, right? And we see here that we've got nine millimeters of gap to the first instance, and that's 13 millimeters 
gap from the start. Now, this is the tricky part that will definitely have gotten me under pressure, right? Let's look at this for a bit. We see that we've got 13 millimeters from the left side of this wire going to the left side of the first lower wire. What that means is that this is also 13 millimeters center to center. That's the same, right? Center to center is the same because it's from left to left, okay? So we have all of the dimensions that we need here. Uh, and let's start designing this thing. So I'm going to start a new part. I'm going to call the soap holder. Holder. Soap holder. Holder. <laughs> um, so how, I'm going to, uh, how am I going to approach this? Well, start a line, right, in the XY plane. Look. I am not dimensioning this. Why? I don't know that length. Now, you'll see what I mean in a minute. And then I'm going to make this arc. Okay, I have the rough shape, but I want to dimension from the outside of one fillet to the outside of the other. So let's just go ahead and make the fillets. Uh, however, remember here, I do know that that fillet, because I'm drawing the center line now, I do know that that fillet is eight millimeters. So I can say that I want to fill it between these two lines of eight millimeters, these two sketch segments, actually. And then I want another fillet between these two, also eight millimeters. Okay, this doesn't look a lot like our shape, but hey, let's, let's press on. Okay, let's dimension from here to here. Um, I want the outside uh, dimension, so I want the zero version of this, so outside slot, and this, this is the dimension that I know to be 171, okay, and I also want to make sure that this is centered with, uh, using the midpoint constraint with three points, again, let me just dimension this, I want number two, okay, actually, yeah, that didn't work. I, uh, I want number one. So again, the the print calls out for eighty, but that's outside to outside. So we we take one radius for either side out of it, which from eighty millimeter gives us seventy six millimeters. Now this is the shape, right? This is the correct shape for the the center line to sweep the top wire. So you know what I'm going to be doing now? Extruding, <laughs> right? That's that's it. I'm going to be extruding a solid shape. So how far am I going to extrude that? Let's let's jump back in the drawing for a bit and let's focus on this part. Now, what do we have here? We know that we have a 22 millimeter max height. That means outside to outside again, again. Same pattern here, outside to outside is 22, so we need to take four out of it, right? Let's go into our extrusion and say 18 millimeters. What I'm going to be doing is I will use my imprinting on this top surface, right? I have a macro in my mouse for it, but I will, for this, for this first time, I will guide you through what the macro does. So I click on the surface, shift P, right? Uh, select create reference figure, maintain association, and hit OK. So now I've got this outer shape. These are all reference shapes. So what I'm going to do now is Control A, which is universal in Windows for control, for, sorry, for select everything. And then I'm going to hit B. Now B for me is my, okay, sorry, Control A, is convert to regular figures, right? I shortcut I've hotkeyed that to the letter B. Okay, and then I'm gonna exit my sketch and now I have a usable sketch up there. Okay, uh, then let's go back here. All inside bends are R6. So these, these lower wires, the inside bend of them is six millimeters. Again, what that 
what does that mean? It's it's the same deal as this corner. That means that the center line of the lower one has a radius of eight. So look what I'm going to do. Jump back in here. Start my fillet command. Select this bottom edge and give it a fillet of eight millimeters. Okay, some of you may have already picked up where this is going, but let's uh, let's go on. Um, so now I want to start creating the sweeps for the lower wires, right? So I'm going to do that. Well, I'm going to sketch on this YZ plane. I'm going to imprint these surfaces, draw a rectangle. It's going to be four millimeters. It's going to be coincident up here, and it's going to be vertical to there. Okay. I want to create my guide, as it were, right? My center line sketch for one of the, for the first of the lower uh, wires. I want to create it along this side of my rectangle, right? That's the location where I want it. So what does that mean? That means that this is. 13 millimeters from that corner. Remember that we said that it gives you that 13. Let's let's go back. It's it's here. It's 13 millimeters from left side to left side, left to left, right? So it's the same center to center. It's also 13. So this is the center line of my top wire. So I want the center line of my lower wire to start 13 millimeters away from that. And what am I going to do that? I'm going to make a cut through the entire thing, all of it. And then I'm going to pattern this cut. I'm going to pattern it along this axis. I want six of these wires. And the spacing, well, the actual drawing gives me the spacing because look, 12 millimeters center, center. Okay, so let's do that. 12 millimeters. Okay, now look what we just achieved here. Each one of these faces, right, contains the actual trajectory to one of the lower wires. But if I start sweeping now, Alibri is going to merge the entire thing and it's all going to be in a mess. Not so. Let's Let's do what Joseph would. What would Joseph do, right? So look, if you delete all of these top surfaces, you still have the faces that you want to project, but these zero thickness surfaces do not add to the mass in whatever way, right? And uh, you can actually use them as guides. So let's start with our sweeps. So we imprint. Project this, and I want a four millimeter wire here. So I'll sweep and I will sweep along this sketch that I projected earlier, right? The reason I projected this earlier is precisely this. Um, I needed my cuts to go all the way to the top of this shape, right? Because now you see that this line goes all the way to the center of this wire, and I need that for the sweep to come out correctly. But if I took these cuts, then I wouldn't have a clean surface to project and create the sketch. So that's why I did that earlier, and I'll start with this first sketch. And then I click on this, imprint, control, all, B, and then turn this back into a uh, reference figure with X, right? If you select and click on an actual geometry line, you get this option available to you, convert to reference figures. And I've hot keyed that to the letter X. X1, imprinting, control, all, B, and then this back into a reference. Escape to ignore. And now I have uh, trajectories for the lower uh, wires. Now I need a plane to design the section. For, the, for my sweeps, right? And I can just open up my insert plane command, select two of these um, top edges, and sure enough, I get the correct plane. I'm selecting the top plane, hitting C to start the circle command. Oh, right, I, I shouldn't start C. I should imprint this edge. Then I hit C, start the circle command, right? 
make a four millimeter circle. Now look, uh, let's say that I open the hurl bar and go to sweep straight away. The sketch to sweep is what I just made and it's just asking me for the path object, which if I start selecting these in the order that they are, because I'm designing the circles in the same order, that means that the sweeps will match. I will get the correct geometry, right? So that's one. And look at this, guys. Check this out. Now, if I go and actually hide all of my surfaces, Hide my sketches, hide my reference geometry. Look at this. Isn't this a beauty? And just to make sure, start our physical properties with calculated. And it's 16 kilograms. No, it's not. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to add the material. <laughs> okay, that's, that's uh, as per the drawing. That is a steel soap holder. Okay, now let's try that again. So it's 128.1 grams. Now you will notice, turn the planes and the axes off. You will notice that these are not eight millimeter fillets. And the further away they go from the initial plane, the less, the less of a fillet they are, they, they actually become a spline. So, uh, this drawing had a tolerance of 100, uh, so, sorry, had a tolerance of one gram plus or minus. The correct answer is 129, so 128.1, which we came up with, uh, is correct. So that would have gotten me the point in the tournament if I hadn't fallen for all, all of these pitfalls that I mentioned. But let's suppose that we want to get it spot on. So how would you do that? Well, um, I would just delete all of it all the way to the original extrusion. And let's take a different approach, okay? So we have this extrusion, let's sketch on here, okay? We, by imprinting, so we brought this in. Now I wanna that one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? I wanna say that this is 13 millimeters. This is 12, this is 12, 12, 12, 12. And now what I'm going to do, well, first of all, let's make all of this reference, right? Because I don't want to be looking at it later on. But let's create reference points out of all of these endpoints. Now, look what we have here. These are the starts for the lower wires, okay? Uh, let's show our planes now. So let's create some planes that we can sketch on. I want, uh, sorry, 13 millimeters for the first one there, then multiple planes, then relative to the previous copy, I want these to have a spacing of 12. <clears throat> sorry, 12. I want five additional ones. And if you look at that, these planes fall precisely on those points, which is cool. So I'll go and sketch on the first one, right? I'm going to bring this one in. I'm gonna say, let's do this roughly. So I'm going to say that this distance is 18 millimeters. This is an eight mil fillet. And of course, sorry, these are tangent. Okay. I'll just extend this past the center. Now, look what I'm going to do here. I'm going to control A, select everything, right click on a sketch element and then select copy with base point. My base point is going to be that point. Just ignore, I've got my first sketch done. Let's go for my next one. Okay, so paste stamper, there you go. 
Done. Okay. So let's play with it. this. Okay, so look what we have here. If I hide my planes, right, we have the, the we have paths for the lower wires that extend past the center. And I think you see what where this is going. Now that we have all that, I don't need the main body now. I'll just turn it into a surface. I'm going to go start uh, my insert plane command. I want to say that. Plane there, an angle of 90 to the original one. There you go. This is where I'll be starting to start the sections to my lower wires. Let's start making some wires. Let's project this in four millimeters. We no H three. Ah, okay. I forgot to make a sketch out of the top one. No matter because I can use these edges to guide my sweep. Now I want to start um, show my points first. Am I showing my points? Tell me. Now they're hidden inside this body. Let's go back. Yeah, that's better. So again, um, in my body, four millimeters. In 15 sketch, showing my point four millimeters. Maybe I think you see where this is going now. This and this done. This and this. Done. And I generate next. So I have this, which is almost almost done. And I'm going to sketch on this top plane, right? Bring this center point in. It's going to take a huge cut here, guys. Cut half of it off. Okay, like this face. And now I will be using the new mirror functionality in Alibre where I can mirror the entire part. Done. Perfect. Let's see, is this 129? 129 on the spot. So there you go, guys. Two ways to do it. Uh, <laughs> I hope you liked it. I hope you uh, picked up some uh, cool ideas on how to do stuff. Uh, I think that both ways to do it are pretty interesting. That's why I showed them. And, uh, and uh, hit like, hit subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. that will be coming your way sooner than you think. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching this. Bye-bye.